This is Karis Alexander with Deep Truth Media. The title of this uh, podcast is Yosemite Rimfire, Connection to Culture of Death and Serious Chemical Attack and Road to World War III. The governments of the world and the power control force are not here to take care of you as much as many of us would like to believe. They are actually here to kill us. They are not unwittingly trying to kill us. They are deliberately trying to kill us, but for reasons that even elude them. Now you're probably saying to yourself, whoa, those are pretty harsh statements, Karis. But it's true. Uh, This is the truth. This is the deeper truth. You know, people won't come out and actually say what's going on. And I think that that's, that's probably the biggest problem that we face is that we are not willing to stare stare truth down in its face and and really call it for what it is. I'm not here to scare you. I'm just here to really shed light on the truth and then it diffuses the charge, any charge whatsoever. You know, the fact that the power control force, those that presume the world are are really trying to kill you, but for reasons that elude them, is is really telling. It really speaks to they know not of who they are, because if they did, they would not be doing what they're doing. If they knew the eternal nature of who and what they are, they would not be able to do these ty- types of atrocities and and. And so they, they, they are under massive, massive hypnosis. They are insane, those that run this world. They are insane. And we, they hide behind this guise of insanity because, and it's so elusive to us, because there are people who on the surface are doing their bidding. But the force that is behind everything that goes on in the physical world stage, they're insane. They're insane. And so within the trans state that they are in, what seems good and right and what is justified as sound reasoning and socially acceptable is absolute insanity. When held up into this, held up, to the standard of awareness and wisdom that you are, which in fact far exceeds the physical world system. And what we experience on the world stage is minuscule, minuscule in comparison to who and what you are as awareness. It's insignificant when you stand in the presence of your beingness as awareness and just hold that, be able to hold that position and you're able to observe the world and what's going on in the physical world stage because we are living through narratives. We are living through scripts. When you come to understand that, that, that we are living through an artificial simulation that's being perpetrated and that we are on onto us as awareness and that as awareness, we are simply captured in this mind-body construct and we are playing out someone else's dream. And so when we come to, we can stand in the truth of this knowingness, we can see that as awareness, what we are experiencing here is is so, so minuscule, so minute in comparison to, to who and what we are. We are marvelous beyond measure. We are grand. We are, we are divine. And what we are experiencing here on this physical world stage is the antithesis of who and what you are. And so the events that continuously unfold with intensity on the physical world stage is, is, is deliberate, it's elusive, and unwittingly causes a state of confusion that drives the power control force to serve a master they know nothing of. They know nothing of. Can you ma- I can't even imagine how horrible uh, the horror of the lives that these people live. Uh, it's just... Uh, just beyond belief. 
Now, this is not bad. I'm just stating or telling it as it is, as part of the program to manipulate you into believing that death, death is real. We, we live in a culture of death now. You never do. You never do die. You are eternal, all-knowing and wise. You cannot die as unique awareness. But because most people only live through the five-sense personality, never experiencing self as awareness, this knowledge and knowingness is obscured from the average person. And due to the fact that many, albeit few, are waking up to the realization of the truth of who and what they are, the power control force is upping the ante in the hopes that many won't wake up to the fact that they are eternal. Why do you think that we are living in the death in amidst a, a culture of death? Why is it intensifying? Because it needs to. This is a finite system. It's a finite program. And in order for it to remain in existence, the power control force must do what they can in order to control every aspect of your awareness. They're upping the ante. They have to. And so what happens in the nature of this, this construct, this, this dimension that we live in, is that they've developed a culture of death. And so the greatest fear of every human being who does not know self is the fear of annihilation. The power control force knows this. It's their dream. Remember that you are living until you wake up to who and what you are as unique awareness. Stare death down to its nothingness, knowing the truth of how you are being deceived and manipulated, thus allowing you never to be controlled again. You must stare death down and know that you are eternal. You are powerful beyond measure. The power control force know this. And this is why they deceive and manipulate your essence into believing in the death program. The time has come for you to realize this eternal nature that you are and stop allowing yourself to be duped as you truly are the one you have been waiting for. Please know the truth of this. And so the example that I want to share with you is this rim fire in Yosemite. It's kind of on the surface and things are happening, but it hasn't escalated yet to the, the level in which I anticipate it probably will. The rim fire is very significant. The Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco, is very significant to the power control force. I've talked about this in the past, but the the ring of fire is is a um, as above so below. The ring of fire, the Pacific ring of fire, that is um, the ocean there, and all the countries that surround it. The ring of fire is what is considered the womb of the galaxy, the, 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 um, the center of the Milky Way galaxy. This is the, the physical world representation of the Milky Way galaxy. So it's very significant to the power control force. And so there will be a number of rituals coming out of this area. And this is just another one. And so I looked up the word Yosemite. And Yosemite means literally those who kill. This is just a subliminal reference in your face as to who's doing the killing. Yosemite is the subliminal suggestion message used for this planned and well choreographed man-made disaster by the power control force. And so there's a number of wildfires, and this is considered the, the well, so far the 13th largest state fire in history. And uh, and it could affect. Uh, San Francisco's key water and power sources. So keep an eye on this this man-made disaster. And so the disasters they happen in August. Take note because every year there's some disaster that happens. We had Hurricane Isaac on the East Coast last year, and each summer you'll see if you go reference back to all the Augusts, you know, in the past there's always something that's coming. 
uh, in terms of earth changes. It's very significant in the month of August. And so who is supporting this culture of death? Death On August the 16th, a very key date, alignment for the power control force. So I bring this up to your attention. Rupert Murdoch, his firm dips into hipster's Bible with seven, $70 million stake in Vice magazine. It's an, a digital online publication with 5% stake sold to Rupert Murdoch's 20th Century Fox, allowing it to expand into Europe and India. The reason why I brought, bring them up is because it's a, a youth a magazine, a digital magazine targeted towards youth, age anywhere from 15 to 35. But if you look, and it covers areas of music and fashion, the fashion industry, um, world news coverage, you know, it's a, it's a it's an online digital publication, but one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention are some pictures which from Vice Magazine's fashion section shoot called Last Words, which reenacts the suicide of famous female authors. And with the images maybe hard to watch or look at, the most disturbing aspect is the fact that it is fashion. It is a fashion shoot. The models are wearing designer clothing, and everything is fully um, credited, as, so readers can buy the clothing. This led many critics to state that the photo shoot glamorizes suicide and makes it almost fashionable. Yes, this is the culture of death that we are living in, and it's being perpetrated to the to to youth. And if you remember in my last podcast, I talked about the public relations in industry. They are managing your perception, manufacturing consent. So, and, um, and they do it through the media. And then, so Victor BCC is saying in these pictures here is that suicide and death is cool. And for a magazine that's being financially backed by someone like Rupert Murdoch, who is part of the, you know, the, the problem, he's part of the, the elite, you know, he's part of that group who, that, that group that runs the, the physical world, you can see what he is promoting and what he is supporting. And the next little piece that I want to share with you is I found this inter interesting segment from The Killing Joke. It's a DC comic. Listen to the excerpt from, from this comic on YouTube. It is very telling and chilling. And when you listen to it, it's a Joker speaking to Batman. It's only three minutes. So listen to it. I listened to it a couple of times. But when you listen to it, listen to the Joker as if you're listening to the power control force. He's speaking about the physical world and how if humanity can't see the, the fact that they're living through insanity that it's insane, that that they're living in a world that's literally going insane. I mean, he, he's really speaking to it, but it's a power control force. And, and so I thought it was quite interesting. I wanted to put that piece. But they have this picture here, Batman, the killing joke. And I find there's again another reference to culture of death. We're seeing the culture of death all around us. And so who is supporting the culture of death in the Middle East? None other than the power control force, with a bit of a twist to support the narrative coming out of Syria. We now, we now have our eyes on chemical warfare. And it's, it's, not, you know, it's not any different than chemtrails, but it's just in your face. I mean, we have chemtrails. We have cellular phones. They're poisoning our food. They're killing us. And, you know, if we're, you know, we, we just, you know, bow down and take all of this. But, you know, it's like, you know, it's like someone like myself who is considered, you know, spiritual. I, I support people on their healing path. You may be saying, well, how can you say these things about what's happening? Because as a spiritual, it's my, my duty. I mean, I can't just talk about the wonderful experience that I'm having. 
you know, I mean, the reality is, is that many are not having this, the experience that I am having. If I'm only speaking to what's happening for me, then it's very, it's only self-serving. But there is a glorious unfoldment that is happening beyond what we are experiencing on the physical world stage as this normal frequency. When we step outside this normal frequency band of normal and experience the glory and totality of who we are as unique awareness uh, on a grander scale, there is just, it's just unbelievable. It's, it's, um, it's undescribable in some senses. You have to experience it, to know it, to know what I'm speaking of. But there's a glorious opportunity for, for those who, who are able to step outside this bandwidth of normal, this artificial simulation, and experience the glory and wonder of who they are, and create a reality of our own choosing. But if I don't speak to what's actually happening on this physical world stage, then, then I'm, I'm doing a disservice to humanity. You have to keep things in perspective. You know, and, and in balance, you know, I have to talk about what most of people are facing on the physical world, although I, I know that it's simply someone else's dream that we are dreaming. It takes the charge off it. It keeps things in perspective. It's, it's a part of what I am here to do. It's part of my calling. And uh, it's part of my own unfoldment. If I ignore that aspect of my own unfoldment, then... I'm really not integrating all the aspects of the totality of the experience of what I'm experiencing in this physical form, right? And so these children that were killed in this chemical war warfare, the culture of death become, is becoming the norm and the World War III is right around the corner. And the events escalating in Syria, Egypt, Lebanon are all part of the next phase leading to World War III. Again, all by design. Nothing in this world just happened. We are living, just happens. We are living through a nightmare or of scripts. But it does not have to become a part of our reality once we come to know and understand the deeper truth. And so these dead children that I show in this, I'll link this, my latest article in the description, you can read this on my blog. And these children were killed in the chemical strike. It's chilling. And you can see this picture of these dead children and they're on ice. Sounds like a cold war is coming. These wars are, you know, we're going to see a repeat of what we saw in, in uh, Nazi Germany. You know, that's going to, we're seeing a repeat of that. It's not that we're going into World War III. We're already in World War III. It's just a different war. It's a psychological war. It's, it's just going to look different. The narrative's going to be different. But we're already in World War III. There's a war against humanity. And so I wanted to post this. So I thought it was quite interesting. And we talked to, in the reference to the Cold War, the name Cold War was coined by the English writer George Orwell. He's been coming up quite a bit. After the dropping of the first atomic bombs in 1945. You know, even then, in 1945, they thought the world was going to end. Just as we're thinking now, the world is going to end. It seems like every century, the world is going to end. And I said, we do live on a planet of war. And so this, this pattern plays out over and over and over and over again. So in 1945... The name Cold War was coined and ushered in a new world as foreseen what they thought that was going to, the, the, the atomic bomb was going to usher in a new world as foreseen by H.G. Wells. And Wells and George Orwell described a world where two major powers, each possessing nuclear weapons and thereby threatened with mutual assured destruction, never met in direct military combat. Instead, in their struggle for global influence, they engaged on ongoing psychological warfare. That's what we're experiencing. And in a regular indirect confrontation uh, through proxy wars. So like a psychological warfare and what we're seeing is what we're experiencing here in North America and parts of Europe 
But the physical war is what they're experiencing in the Middle East. I've been watching Syria uh, for the past two years. I, I did a, a YouTube video several years ago about Syria. And so I've been watching Syria. That's one of the headlines that I watch. I watch Egypt. And now Lebanon is coming into the picture. And so well, I watch the events coming out of Syria because Syria uh, represents Sirius. See the play on words? And Bashir al-Assad was an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, uh, before he became president or went into politics. So the all-seeing eye. So I knew right then and there, and there are other players besides him, but I knew that Syria was going to be uh, a launching pad for World War III. So I've always watched it for the past, well, since I came into this information for the past two years. So Syria is very um, significant in what's playing out on the narrative on the physical world stage, and so is Egypt. That's why I watch them. So cycles of ver relative calm are followed by high tension. So we see calm and then we see this tension, and ten tension, intensification. What we're seeing now on the physical world stage is a bit different. We're seeing some really um, shocking, horrific images, uh, narratives playing out. And I find that very interesting as we just had Another, another Star of David configuration, which we will continue to have them coming in and out, the Star of David's configuration coming in and out over the next year to 2014, summer of 2014. They'll be phasing in and out. And then we had this Grand Cross alignment on Saturday as well. And then we had the planetary alignment, which was very significant on the weekend. But what happened for me, it just seems like the veil you know they talk about the apocalypse and the revelation the if you look up these words there uh, they really mean revealing and yet people have given them a different connotation but they they really mean a v unveiling a revealing and what it felt like for me was just a, a more of an unveiling a really like a just a bare nakedness a dropping down a bare nakedness of really seeing the world for what it is. It's just really very shocking and in your face. It's like a bare nakedness, an exposure, an exposure. So we're going to see things intensify and a major exposure of what is telling, what is true about the physical world that we live in. So it's very provocative. The energies are very interesting right now. So what I suggest to you is, I'm going to close this with saying, dare to dream a different dream than one, the one that is being food fed to you. Because when you do, you, are, you will literally transform your world and the world around you. This is so true. Prepare yourself. You know, prepare yourself. Because what we're moving into in this culture of death that's intensifying in this this, this psychological warfare that's playing out in the physical world stage, this whole World War III narrative and drama that's playing out, we're going to see utter destruction and chaos and mayhem on the physical world stage. And we're going to see people around us not being here. And it's going to significantly change and alter our realities. Plural. And so it's very easy for me to, to, to stand behind a microphone share these, you know, these articles, these posts, connecting the dots. I mean, this is a very safe place for me. It's not true activism. We are not prepared, really, psychologically, I don't believe, for what is to come our way. And so that's just uh, something to ponder. I don't know how I will respond as things intensify. I don't know. That's the nature of this game. My hope is, is that I will be more and more in a place of detachment. And that's, that seems to be, and that I'll be able to still express from this high, 
high place of, of the knowingness of who and what I am as unique awareness. To say that the power control force is killing us and, and that we are living um, within a deaf culture, I'm doing it from a place of being totally humbled and detached, not in a place of fear. So I hope that I can maintain that semblance of, of my own sanity as we, as we move forward. I thank you so much for being here. And uh, please, any questions, please leave any questions or comments and, and subscribe to the channel. I wish you all the best and we'll keep just watch and wait and see what transpires on the physical world stage. And in the interim, consider doing your own work or continue doing your own work and preparing yourself for whatever is to come in your own lives. Take care. Bye-bye.